Welch will be giving his speech. David came to Chapel Hill in 2006 and currently works as an environmental consultant. He has a daughter that is just about to turn one year old. This is his seventh speech in the Competent Communicator Manual. He has researched boric acid for you. The title of his speech is The Beauty of Boric Acid. Please welcome David. <laughs> Um, you'll have to bear with me. I'm a little bit of a science nerd these days, so I like to, I'm not, not quite the chemist, but I like to, if I latch on to something, I like to go and research it um, in depth. I discovered, or rather rediscovered, this rather simple common substance. It is not new and is not improved. In fact, the ancient Greeks used this chemical for a variety of purposes. For this speech, I'm going to tell you whether boric acid is a wonder product, a panacea for the world's problems, or just a simple white powdery chemical. In nature, it is found in seawater. It is found in some fruits. It is also associated with geological features near volcanoes. It's been used to preserve caviar. It can help you prevent infection. It can help you reduce or eliminate athletes. <coughs> It's also an ingredient in eye wash. An industrial application for boric acid is when it's in the water, it can slow down the nuclear reactions in the reactor and cool it, cool it off. So the, the boric acid is also uh, ranges from the health applications to industrial applications. But I think the most important use of boric acid is it's a ma major ingredient in silly putty. <laughs> Before researching, or while I was researching boric acid at the very beginning, I thought it was this wonder chemical. It could do all these things. But when digging a little bit deeper into the uh, properties of this uh, substance, I discovered that there were some, a, a few bit of problems. And just as a reminder that, that uh, I, I should tell you, any chemical that you use should be used with prudence. And I'll be talking a little bit about that later in my talk. I want to focus on one use in particular, and that is to fight insect pests. And I also want to tell you why it is a good choice to use to control ants and cockroaches in your house. I first heard about boric acid in a biology class. Our balding ponytailed pony professor taught us the biology of arthropods, which is essentially a, an exercise in memorizing uh, crustaceans, insects, arachnids, any sort of critter that has kind of a, a hard, leathery outside with a gooey interior. <laughs> Something like a stale old uh, chocolate bonbon with legs. Oh. <laughs> I remember little from that course, except for the useful fact that it can, you, it can be used to control cockroaches. I used this immediately in my apartment because we were infested with the tiny cockroaches when we turn on the lights they would respectfully scatter into the, into the netherworld. So I bought some boric acid and spread it around uh, in uh, hard to reach areas such as behind a refrigerator and, and in other places where we, we, we wouldn't run into it. And lo and behold, in, a, in about a week or so, the numbers had really diminished. And I dare say if other apartments around us had used the same technique, I think we would have eliminated the population altogether and eliminated the problem. Another experience I had with boric acid was this summer. Every July about, our house gets invaded by little ants foraging for food. Usually our diligence in cleaning up after, after ourselves gets them to move on a bit. There's not really much of an incentive to do that. However, at that point, my daughter was just beginning to eat solid food. And as a consequence, a lot of the solid food was ending up on the floor, providing plenty of incentive for the ants just to stick around. But I finally got sick and tired of uh, looking at the ants in our, in our house or sharing, sh sharing our, our food with, our ant with the ants. So I bought some boric acid traps in little plastic containers and put them on the outside of our house. And in about a week, the ants were gone and they have not come back. So how does this boric acid work? On insects. 
Well, in the powder form, it's the, the insects crawl into the powder, uh, it, it attaches to their appendages, and then uh, as they're moving around, it scrapes their outside leathery part, and eventually they, uh, they die of dehydration, basically, because the, they, they just can't keep the, um, the fluids in. And in the kind of liquid form, it, it works the same way when the ants ingest it, but they just kind of dry up from the inside. Now, dying of thirst is a bad way to go, but once you consider the alternatives, you can live with the insect vermin, or you can use other common uh, products such as uh, pyrethrin, which is the active ingredient in RAID. Now, the active ingredient in RAID uh, is a neurotoxin. It, it affects the insect's nervous system and causes organ failure and causes them to die that way. These toxic effects are not just limited to insects, but they're also if it gets into the water, will kill fish very, very quickly. <coughs> and also, recent studies suggest that these pyrethrins uh, will affect humans. Um, studies on rats have shown that the chemical that these chemicals can affect the nervous and reproductive systems. And a preliminary study has shown that exposure to these pyrethrins will lower the sperm counts in men. So compared to having having uh, neurotoxins in your <coughs> environment or having something that will scrape uh, you know, an insect dry is sort of a balance that, that, that you need to think about. Now, boric acid is not perfectly safe. Now, so, so, in so, so some of the uses I, I suggested before, or, or that I mentioned before, you can, you can eat this stuff, right? However, there's some, there's some studies coming out that says that long-term high levels of boric acid exposure to, to high, high levels of, of boric acid may, may lead to some maladies such as um, uh, associated with your kidney and, and some other internal organs. So with, as, in the, as with any chemical, you have to use it prudently. And using it, say, in, in the back of your cabinets or on the outside of your house will, will not uh, lead you to be exposed. And with silly putty, if you have your, your kid has silly putty, just don't have them eat the silly putty. <laughs> So is boric acid a wonder product? Is it a panacea to solve the world's problems? No, but I think it's a useful product, and it's a good choice to control insect pests. So before calling me Orkin Man, consider boric acid instead. Thank you.